I'm Michelle um, and uh, welcome to my knitting podcast. Um, I live in the north of England and uh, there is a really, there's a tiny chance, very tiny chance, that you might recognise me as I have had a knitting podcast before. Um, okay, very quickly, because it's important, um, specifically because I will be wearing the clothes that um, I've made. Um, all through last year, I um, dealt with having uh, breast cancer, and which meant chemotherapy, which meant grey, unruly uh, regrowth that we just have to just put up with, um, and a double mastectomy. Um, I don't, uh, I haven't had reconstruction, and I won't be having reconstruction. And aside from the difficulties of dealing with uh, the, the, the diagnosis and the treatment, I was a very large breasted lady. I was 34K and initially I'd only had one of the breasts removed, the cancerous one. So I was left one side flat and the other side with a very large breast. And um, I, 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 yeah, I, I, that was difficult. Being flat, having nothing is not difficult, but having one and nothing and that huge side difference, size difference and the prosthesis that you have to wear to be able to get some sort of balance, that was quite difficult and it was a situation where I couldn't, I couldn't knit for myself, I couldn't create clothing for myself, um, I, I wasn't body confident at all um, and yeah psychologically I wasn't there so I, I deleted all my content and I'm pleased I've deleted it because I'm a completely and utterly different person not just psychologically but my colorings changed um, obviously my body shapes changed so I'm learning and I'm starting from the beginning now <laughs> Um, I'm, a reluc I'm reluctantly changing because the grey hair would indicate that I should probably move away from my um, autumnal tones. I'm having great difficulty moving away from my autumnal tones and it's a little bit of a theme going through this. Um, I like to warm my colours up, let's just say that. Okie dokie. So, I had my second breast removed in uh, November, November of last year and from that moment on I've been knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and it's been refreshing. Um, so I'll show you first my little knitting basket. That is my uh, little bit of lavender to try and stop the moths from enjoying what's in my knitting basket. Um, yeah, so this sits in my living room with, with all my project in normally it's piled up this has just got one project in just now to show you and it is the Billy pullover um, and I'm knitting this for my husband it's my very first it's not my first cable um, I can cable the, the hat up there that's a that's a cabled hat uh, I can cable um, a side effect of chemotherapy is something what they call um, chemo brain and uh, I'm still having my concentration it's still not as it was um, I do I, I do forget things so focusing on Sari Nodland's pattern which is fabulous this pattern is not difficult if you can cable which the cable stitch itself is not a difficult stitch you can do this pattern the difficulty I'm having is every single stitch you have to be aware of what you're doing um, and I'm the sort of person that knits to relax. I like to just knit round and round and round and round and round. I don't even purl and round and round and I can twist it rib round and round and round. It, it doesn't bother me um, but I do need some round and round knitting in my life. So I have to do this in stages. Um, and also, without showing you too much of the pattern, I have to make notes. I have to make notes all over the pattern to remind me where I am. Um, well, I'm getting there. 
yeah and, and if and if that's what i have to do to produce to you know you know to enjoy the patterns that i'm enjoying then fair enough so i am using drops nepal in a the, the darkest gray i think this might be charcoal it doesn't say what color it is but it says it's 0506 and it's a 65 percent wool and a 35 percent alpaca mix very squishy very warm it's probably going to be quite a heavy jumper um i have used this before so let me show you what i'm up to i haven't got very far because only been going with it for a number of days and I'm tangled. So <clears throat> I have you start off doing a front side and a left and right front side and then when you get so far down you join and then that becomes that becomes the main the main front and it's a repeat of what you can see in the back. So as you can see, let me see, it's very difficult because it's just, it's just new. I am getting there. Now oh, let's side the, the, um, the increases next to the sleeve increases and the sleeves. So I am getting there. Yeah, so I am getting there with it. Um, and now I've dropped it all on the floor. I do, I am using, a, a, when I say I'm using the cable needle, I'm using a, a double pointed a sock needle um, for my cables. Um, I think I prefer that with this. I think I prefer, I know that you can do cables without using a needle and I can cable without a needle, but I like, I like the, um, so I've, I've brought front and back on the front of my, on my, on my pattern to indicate, you know, I see the word front. I like to put my stitches in the front and it just keeps everything right. Um, uh, he He's very knitworthy. He understands what goes into producing a sweater. Whether he knows what goes into producing a sweater like that, I don't know. Oh, I probably do because I think I've told him quite a bit that it's a lot of work and it's a lot of uh, concentration. Um, yeah, <laughs> I can tell he wants it because I have made him a sweater before uh, in, in my early days in knitting and it was just a stockinette sweater. And I did um, a neck, a folded neck, and instead of knitting two together and, and making a stretchy neck, I... Um, I just sewed it down. He can't. He can hardly get it over his head because it's just rigid. It's in place. There's no stretch there. And he he did check with me. Do you, do you know how to do the stretchy neck? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's all right. Um. So yeah. So that is um the nearly pour over. Okie dokie. Um. So this week. Last Tuesday, after uh, all the medical problems of last year and vulnerabilities and my other underlying vulnerabilities, um, on Tuesday I con contracted COVID. Yeah. After all this time of being very careful and avoiding it, um, my daughter got it from school and, and brought it home and despite all my vas all my vaccinations i yeah developed symptoms um i'm well i'm fine um uh so yes the billy pullover was not happening um last week so i did uh pick up some more yarn to knit augustine's number 9 I'm going to do this. Drop that on the floor. Pop that on there. So, this is Augustine's number nine so far. Let me take it up, up for you. There we go. As you can see, it's a bit of a high low hem. 
It's knit in very light fingering and more hair held together. And I'm using Cascade 220 uh, fingering in the Walnut Heather colourway. And this is Drop Skid Silk. What was its colourway? I think it's just beige. So I'm um, these two together are producing this fabric. You might be able to, to see at the front. So this pattern uh, has a lot of increases along this row here. You can see. So it's quite a fluted edge. It's quite a, and I thought because, because I'm flat, it would just, maybe I, not necessarily disguise, I don't want to disguise because I will, you know, I do walk around, I do go out, I'm, I'm not self-conscious like that, but I just thought it might be a little bit, it's quite a, quite a feminine, um, I feel it's quite a feminine, feminine uh, sweater and um, I just thought it would be quite a nice, and I think it is, I think it's going to have enough positive ease, enough, enough float to, for me to feel really quite good in, in it, to, for, really quite good in it for the rest of the, the winter and, and maybe even, you know, with it being so light and airy, airy even with the mohair, I'll probably still be able to wear this at some point in the spring. Um, so it has a, a picot edged neck and what you do is you thread in some ribbon and that ribbon ties at the back which you just find is so lovely um augustine's uh, um sophie and belling or something i should have checked yeah she recommends that you have two meters of um the ribbon and have a nice big floaty bow and ribbon all down all down the back so that's what i'm going to do I was talking about colours just at the beginning there and this is um, quite quite a warm cool <laughs> okay this is this is I feel this is a brown that might go with what's happening with my hair um, it's a autumnal tone warm <laughs> but I think the beige mohair brings a cool element to it as well and that's my story and that's what I'm sticking to so I'm thoroughly enjoying this it is such such a simple construction um, like I said I've been I've been ill with COVID and still managed to do it basically without giving too much away you're increasing every other row in between your stitch markers for the arm increases. So there's very little thought and remembering having to go into it. But the, the fabric it produces, the, the flounce it produces without being over the top. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, um, I don't like too much flounce. I think that's what I'll, I'll, I'll keep it to. I don't like too much flounce, but this this spoke to me and I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Okie dokie. Oh, my little off cut. Let me just get my little off cut. And there was it right in the bottom of the bag. Let me see. There it is. Okay. I'll probably just now I've got it out show you my no I can't get everything back in this is my <laughs> oh, this is my um notions pouch and it is made by me completely 100 percent made by me um for all its things that is wrong with it um this was an English paper piece and project that I started before the pandemic, um, my intention was to go around the charity shops, buy uh, secondhand cottons and put them into a blanket. 
uh, into a quilt and it was it was literally it was a week after i bought my first few things that we we all the whole we all shut down and then i started buying fabrics and it just didn't have the same just didn't mean the same anymore and fabrics are beautiful um but it just didn't it didn't have the same meaning and I think in two years I had only put on a foot and a half by maybe four foot um, and it got to a point about what, six weeks ago where I thought Do you know I'm never I'm never going to finish this never in a month or some days going to finish this so I quilted it uh, not hand quilt I put it on the machine, um, put it on the machine, quilted it, put a lining in. Now this lining is very rough, very, very rough. As you can see, there's, I'm not a bag maker at all. And uh, the zip, the zip's very rough as well. But I have my own notions pouch and it's handmade. And I'm just so pleased that that project came to an end. Um, came to a completion and it wasn't sat there, it wasn't wasted and I have something useful. Okie dokie, all right. So I had um, some Noro silk garden um, and I was going to make the night shift um, shawl. And it, it, I, was, I was holding one, I had, I had this and I had a purple and a brownie based um, uh, yarn and it was working up and it was okay but it was a little bit boring and it <laughs> I had to decide whether I was going to invest more and more money into it try and pull it round or just give up and I'd only bought that and the other the other yarn um, so I hadn't invested a great deal into it. So I pulled it out and I held this with the other yarn double um, to produce a hat. I'll put, I'll put a picture of the hat on the screen for you. Um, my own pattern. I, um, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't. Didn't follow pattern. Um, but as you can see, it is. It's quite cool looking and yes the rules state that I should now probably have a cool uh, cool colours but the contrast was just too much between the that was obviously a mild effect but that was too too light and too cool for me against some of the purples and some of the browns and I wanted to warm up a little bit so I did I, I I uh, put it in some tea and I put it in some tea with a little bit extra yarn so I could make a pom-pom and I warmed it up. And I feel, uh, because of the, con the cotton content in it, I did wonder whether uh, I was going to get too much of the, uh, the orange. Thankfully, I didn't. Um, I left it in for, it was less than five minutes. I didn't leave it in for um, much longer than that. But yeah, I have a warmed up hat that I still think still think suits my colouring I think we're all right um didn't have too much orange and I am I'm I'm chuffed a bit with it um and you know what I enjoyed myself dyeing it with my tea so win win so that's my hat so the um the other thing I've been working on this week is, um, well, I suppose you could say they are the Sunday socks by Petite Knit, except it's a two by two rib sock. And um, I haven't bought pattern. Um, I know how to construct a sock from my, from my foot. So I just, I'm just doing a two by two rib sock. Um, <clears throat> I will be wearing it like that. So there we go, as you can see, I uh, have the uh, foot part, 
I have done the heel flap, I have done the, um, the turn, I have picked up the stitches and I'm ready to decrease to go on with the top. I am knitting this out of Drops Alaska and uh, it is a non super wash. I'm I do believe it's a non super wash yarn. I'm sure it is, even though it's a commercial yarn. I'm sure Drops Alaska is. Um, yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, now, these are for me in uh, our camp van. Um, we're converting um, an old works van into a camper. Um, I, I'll, I'll show you, I will show you, I will give you pictures, um, uh, maybe a video of it when, when I finish these socks. Um, so yes, so that's why there's no, there's no nylon um, and I'm, I'm daring using a commercial iron weight yarn for a pair of slipper socks because, you know, the footprint in that van Basically, I need to I'll need to set, step down from the bed <laughs> and and step into my my seat in the front. Um, so yes, but when I knit these, I am saving. Let me get them. I am saving um, pips from avocado pips, avocado pips, and I will be over dyeing this very light grey with um, the pink that I can get out of those pips. I won't need to modern them because I'm sure it's somewhere like 22% of um, the pips are uh, have a tannin in them. So again, I'm no modern on my, my dying adventures. Um, so yeah, those are my loosely based Sunday socks. I only started these yesterday evening and I'm, I'm halfway through now. Um, I think iron weight socks for the van may be my round and round and round, not much concentration needed here type project. Okay, I think we are nearly at the end of this week's project. I do want to show you um, these gloves. Uh, I'll put a picture on the screen there of the hole that was in them. Now these are 100% plastic gloves. Uh, these are not a very expensive pair of gloves, but my husband has had them for years. Um, I do remember he had them when the girls were little. I remember seeing him pulling sledges with these gloves on. They're fleece lined. They're toasty warm and they suddenly developed a hole and I set two fix in it because we had them. There's nothing wrong with them other than a hole. He goes to them time and time again when the snow comes. So I thought, well, we just have to look after what we've got. <laughs> and I picked up some sock wool. And I just knit a flap, secured the flap and secured down the sides. And I, um, and I, and I fixed them. They've got some more life in them. He seemed quite happy about it. Um, uh, I, supp I suppose the channel's called A Simple Life and the camper van isn't about us going away on holidays and, and that sort of stuff, although that, we can't wait to do that. The camper van features in our future because we've sold our house and um, come the spring we are going to be looking for property and um, in Scotland somewhere it could be an island could be the highlands could be the east coast west coast we don't know um, but we are making a move and both of us we are not consumers you you won't on, on, on this podcast you won't find look at all the lovely yarns I've bought you know look at my stash and my husband's the same, we don't want to accumulate and have, um, so when I've said to my husband, look, I've, I've, I've fixed your glove, is the colour okay, can you cope with it, and he goes, oh yeah, 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 and that's really good, yeah, that's really good, that, yeah, thanks, he means it, because it's the way we want to go, 
we we're, we want to be a little bit more reliant on ourselves i think and that, that's that's as much as i'll say about that but um who knows what i can i'll be able to share in the future about it all just looking at that patch reminds me that i have to show you what's in the travel travel project bag now this bag i've had for a long long time and it was my notions pouch until i made that one but now it's my travel bag and all i can tell you is it's made by me lovingly by gail and that's where i got it from it's got a lovely a lovely uh, orange gingham uh, inside okay let me find my sock oh we're losing stitches and this is the problem with choosing to knit on very small uh, double pointed needles i think for my travel socks i'm going to have to move to magic loop um, and have the longer cables because that's a recipe for disaster that <laughs> so yes i am using leftover bits of drops nord for the cuff and that will be on the toe and the other part is uh, recall vintage and it's in the green brown colorway and this is what it's oh i don't want to i don't want to pull it into sock shape in case i lose my stitches again but yes that's what it's knitting up to be so that's in my travel bag and i won't show you that again now um until i finished it uh this this is my I, I will go through this actually this is my preferred uh, vanilla sock recipe and it is a two by two rib for about 15 rounds i say about i just eyeball it and when i come to do the other one uh, the other sock i will just put it next to this and eyeball that as well um so i just knit vanilla all the way down stock a net my heel i like a heel uh a heel flapping gusset sock i've i prefer to do an afterthought heel sock because it's much faster um i like the block of color that it produces but the fit just isn't there um and i found that um woolen wine kirsten lara lara her my favorite socks pattern produces the perfect sock fit for me and that's what i go to time and time again um to the point where i don't have to look now um i pick up 20 21 stitches along the sides and that's a perfect heel flap and gusset for me so yes yeah, so i'm just going along the bottom of the foot now and um i will do a uh, a decrease tour so i'll decrease down the side and then i'll de i will kitchen a stitch the end difficult the nerves have got to me i feel like i've raced through it i feel like i've talked very fast and um i feel like i've bombarded you um <laughs> um so yes there's one final thing that i would like to just go through with you and it isn't knitting so as part of um i, I guess my mental health and uh appreciating what i have um yeah staying grounded i i wanted to have a gratitude journal that i could keep by my bed <clears throat> and of an evening before I, I pick up my book to read or or whatever it is that I'm, I'm going to settle down to do before i go to sleep i wanted to just write a few things down that i was grateful for and it, I just had this need to make it. I, I have never bookbinded before or bookbound before, and um, I give it a go. <laughs> I don't have any of the materials that I'm supposed to have. Um, basically, I wax my cotton with a, a candle. Um, I used a, a scrapbook as um, the pages for the signatures. Um, I've just used a, a normal embroidery needle um, 
The cardboard is literally an Amazon box um, and it's backed in <laughs> it's backed in uh, crinkle paper from my potato sack um, but I have my own gratitude journal and it's so strong um, I'm really happy I'm really really happy with it and um, I, I did a little I did a little video for you um, uh, so you can just just see step by step what I did anyone can do this anyone can give it a go with what you have in the house seriously it was a, such a stress-free process because I didn't I didn't have any um, I didn't have any expectations about what it was going to turn out and because I was doing it my way I had no I had nothing to compare it to in terms of other people's work it was just what it was and it's a perfect gratitude journal for me and um, yeah hope you enjoy the video And that's it for me. Um, hope to see you really soon. Um, I'm hoping this is going to be a little bit of a, what I've uh, knit and crafted this this week. Um, project in the pipeline. Um, uh, I have a yoked sweater to start or get yarn for. Um, I'm awaiting yarn for a uh, Icelandic unspun Felix uh, pullover and I am going to be upcycling a second hand um, lamp stand uh, which I would like to share with you. I also have a crochet granny stripe, um, a granny square blanket in the wings and um, yeah so hopefully I will have finished a few things, started a few things and pulled some old stuff out um, to work on the next time as well. Thanks. Bye-bye.